I am Bill Cortright with Living Right with Bill Cortright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am your host, Bill Cortright, and I am here with the super millennial, David Barreto, giving us the millennial perspective. How you doing today, Big Dave? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. So we're getting ready to get hit by a hurricane, right? So <laughs> never dull. Nothing it. new around here. Nothing new. If you're new to Florida, this is kind of like our regular um, July, August, and September time. Yeah. So. You know, hurricane season for most people is just uh, extra days off. <laughs> so Florida is so- that's the hurricane parties, things like that. It's It's nothing new around here. So the storm is hitting, a little bit of the storm is hitting now, so you can probably hear the thunder in the background. So, you know, if ACDC can get a hit song, we can get a hit song with the thunder (laughs) rolling, right? So this week, our topic is the prison of our beliefs. And it was kicked off on Sunday, Stress Mastery Weekend Edition, with host Mark Middlestead. He talked on who we are and why we are here. On Mondays with the Super Millennial, Creativity is the key from your the key from your prison. Health huddles today. We will talk on rest the body. On meeting of the minds, we will have an episode on the identity of should. And on connection Thursday, we are going to talk on vibration in our reality. And I am going to reveal the deeper spiritual practices that I do and the spiritual practices of stress mastery for the first time. So Thursday will be a very, very deep episode. And then on Friday, we will continue our book study, A Pocket Full of Money by David Cameron Giandi. Big Dave, what you got going on? I got a whole lot of stuff going on um, for you guys in the community. Uh, for those of you who have asked about the recording uh, for the right fit for you uh, Q and a, we are working on getting that um, set up, at least having the questions and stuff answered. Um, Coach Jason, coach Felix, uh, all of us are, are trying to get that set up for you guys. Uh, we, it's looking like we're probably going to do another one following up next month. Um, Jason, Felix, if you guys are listening to this, this is all news to you. Uh, this is kind of how we do business, as Bill would say, over the podcast. Uh, so we'll get together, we'll do, um, you know, brainstorm and get some dates out for you guys. But uh, that's all I have. All right. I'm ready to roll if you are. Let's do it. So this week, our topic is the prison of our beliefs. In today's Health Huddles, we are discussing rest the body, but it's not what you think. Today's episode on rest the body will not address sleep. Yeah, sleep is essential for a healthy body and mind. And there's a lot of research and information about sleep. We've done several episodes on sleep. There are apps, special sound effects for sleep, mattresses that can be tailored to what you need for deep sleep. No, that's not today's discussion. Rest the body. My intention today is to disrupt your belief systems about health and your body. So we look at beliefs. Beliefs are the programs that have built the life you are living this very moment. The human being is hardwired for behavior. This behavior is dictated by what is held in mind. Your belief systems are held in mind. These are set between the ages of 7 and 16 years with the belief systems originally being planted at birth till age seven. And this is all automatically done through the stages of development. Your beliefs programs are what sets the filters that sets your perception of the world. These beliefs programs are what sets your state, your energy, your vibration, And we each build our reality through our vibration. Any thought on that, David? Yeah. uh, What I was trying to get across for uh, Monday's episode was you can only go as far as where you're set and you're stuck at. I think this is a perfect example of where, you know, I was trying to get that across for sure. 
I'm going to go deep this week on this because I think this is a kind of a deep week because next week we're going to talk on letting go. So there's a reason. <laughs> now, I have everything pretty much following the order because we look at beliefs. Beliefs are programs. So beliefs programs are actually eternal commands. It's these that drive that drives your behavior to take action or to hesitate and avoid taking action. And these beliefs can cause you to hesitate and avoid acting, even if the action avoided would improve upon your life. Your beliefs, programs, originate from what you see, hear, feel, and are set through your environment, events, taught knowledge, experiences. And most of these beliefs, programs, were set by age seven. Mm -hmm. Then these beliefs, programs, belief systems goes into a state of stasis designed not to change, designed for equilibrium to stay the same. And this is all protected by the comfort zone. And this comfort zone is designed to make sure the beliefs, the programs are there to drive your behavior in a certain manner. Is that so much for free will? Yeah, you got to steer the herd. <laughs> you got to steer the herd of beliefs, right? <laughs> yes. You know, so what I think, David, one of the biggest misconceptions that people have is that our, our beliefs, these programs are static. That is what that that is the way, you know, people think. They think, well. This is just the way it is. This is who they are. This is who I am. And nothing could be further from the truth. Beliefs are a choice. We have the power to choose and self-author our beliefs. We have the power to choose and self-author our programming. These beliefs, programs, create our belief systems and it's our belief systems that creates and becomes our reality. So if you're not doing personal development, then your reality was actually set for you, but it's still a choice. You have a choice to continue the behavior that you have and live the life that you're living in this moment. Or you have a choice to move into stage four of development, self-authoring mind, and let go of the beliefs and programs that do not serve what you desire in life. And you have the ability and choice to set new programs, beliefs that create skills and behaviors that serves what you desire in life. But it's a choice. What are your what's your what's the millennial perspective on that, David? Yeah, I think uh, for me, I think it's the the exact same thing you said. It, it's the choice, but it's the awareness of it. Every time I look back, five years, three years, two years, anytime I look at the the changes that I've made, the different beliefs that I hold now, I look back to see the friend group that I left or the the people who I was surrounding, and if those people stayed in that group. They've had the same belief system still, but I have a different one. So I've saw that when I get out of that tribe, kind of escape from the herd, the belief systems start to change. So that goes along with my social media, the things that I you know watch on YouTube and podcasts, all that stuff. The change was me making it instead of just thinking that me staying there and not doing anything was going to change because the people who are still there are still having the same beliefs and doing the same thing over and over. That's okay. How old are you? 27. So let me tell you something. I still know people who have the same beliefs or doing the same things that I did when I was 27. <laughs> Just so you know. I mean, yeah. it's really common. I'm not putting people down or anything else. It's just but, the way the human being is hardwired for behavior. So the question I have for you is the people that you know that still have the same beliefs from 27, you know, are they still in the same place, the same group of friends, same everything? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, and that's that's why absolutely I've the yes. Thing is that if they go and out I'm and not, change, 
I don't want to come across like I'm judging though either because I'm not. Because you have to understand, most people, this is a choice that you can reset your programming. Yet, to make this choice, one must understand the process of doing this. It's not automatic. It's not easy. And it's not natural. And I think to make a choice, one has to have a good understanding about the body. See, our belief systems are not just some cold mental assumptions. Just because we are unconscious, not aware, doesn't mean these belief systems are not active. Our beliefs, programs, are held in the head and the cage mind. And these activate and are the emotions and energies that you feel in the body. When you're stressed out, the feeling of anxiety in the body is coming from the belief systems in the head. The body supports the mind. And I don't think people understand it. They think, oh, it's just normal. Stress is normal. No, it's not. It's not normal for the human being to function and operate being stressed out. It's not normal. For over 200,000 years, this did not happen. So it can't be said that it's normal, right? Yeah. So let's slow down and look at this. We may react aggressively, feel as if we're being attacked and causes us to react over the top angrily in aggression. This is basically what happens with road rage. This is what happens when our beliefs and programs are being challenged. We go in to defend and attack. And even though we can't control the traffic and the other drivers, the rage is very real. Nobody can deny when they're in road rage that they're not being aggressive. The question you have to ask yourself is, what is driving me to behave this way? Because it doesn't serve me in the long run. You understand, mm -hmm. David? Yeah, for sure. So now, when we look at research, the latest research now shows that the emotional brain is no longer confined to the classic fight and flight parts of the amygdala, the hippocampus, and the hypothalamus, that the sensory information, its input from our environment, undergoes a filtering process as the info travels across one or more of the synapses. Ultimately, this, these, it will, this information will travel into the area of higher processing, that is held in the frontal lobes of the brain. There, the sensory information enters our conscious awareness. And this is what can allow us to respond instead of react. This is everything we teach in Stress Mastery. Mm -hmm. From day one until the day you pass, <laughs> we're teaching you the same thing. It is possible to pause, plan, and respond. Now, what determines if that sensory information can reach our frontal lobes where we can actually consciously be aware and respond? What determines it is your beliefs, your programs, <laughs> your belief systems. It's your belief system is that is what determines the portion of the sensory information that is allowed into our conscious awareness. This is important. This is why so many personal growth self-help programs fail. They are focusing on building new programs and skills, creating new habits, which is important but they fail to release the old programs. Thus, those programs are still there and we fall back into old behavior. But this program, these programs are affecting your awareness because they're causing you to go into 
judgment, and reaction. So your programs, your beliefs is what shapes your thinking. And your thinking creates your emotions. And your emotions drive your behavior. Do you, did I make that clear, David? Yeah, and I think that's where a lot of most people are, are attached to is that emotion. They think that it's justified because they feel it and that's real to them, which I'm not going to take it away from you. It is real, but is that what you should be listening to? Because what is it attached to? And that's what people forget. And it is real because that's what they feel, right? Mm -hmm. That is their perception. Yeah. But is that the question you have to ask yourself, is that perception, those emotions, are they serving you? Are they beneficial for you? Are they driving your behavior to where you want your life to go? That's the question. And if it's no, well, then you have to step in and look closely at this. It's important because I don't believe people understand this, David. Belief systems Filter the world you see. This is what sets your perception of what is happening. This sets your identity base, your state, your energy, your vibration. This is maintained through thoughts. And thoughts are literally bursts of neurochemicals. And according to your state, this is positive or negative. If your state is in awareness, the human constructs operate as, one, the survival, human survival system goes in recuperation green zone. Two, the vagus nerve is activated. Three, the mind identity, you become present and your information gets to those frontal lobes. Four, the body identity supports the mind with perfect hormone communication and calmness. And five, your identity base is an event awareness and response. In this state, your thoughts are creating bursts of positive neurochemicals. Now, if your thoughts are about defend and attack, like you said, David, or about what should be, or about what's wrong with this or those people or this situation, if your thoughts are in judgment, to judge something is to decide against it, then the human construct operates as, one, the human survival system, alarm system, red zone is activated. Two, the stress loop activates and deactivates the vagus nerve and connects the thoughts from the head to the body. You feel it. Three, the mind identity, the ego has taken conscious mind control. And this creates, very important for those listening, this creates perceptional blindness. Deaf effect. That means the thoughts create a story about the problem and the ego magnifies the conflict. You're stuck in the conflict. Four, the body identity. The body supports the mind. Now what happens in the body connects the HPA axis. This is the hypothalamus red zone sympathetic nervous system is activated. The pituitary gland is releasing the hormone ACTH. This hormone is being driven and telling the adrenal glands to secrete stress hormones. Cortisol, so cortisol is being released by the adrenals. Cortisol signals the liver for a fuel the body needs to fight or flight, defend and attack. This fuel is sugar. The pancreas releases insulin in response to the sugar. And this response, this when the pancreas releases insulin, this suppresses glucagon hormone. So now the body cannot burn fat. And if the body is in short supply of sugar, or if the alarm system is activated too long, that means long periods of being stressed out, cortisol will actually break down the body's muscle. And it'll break the muscle into amino acids and then shuttle those amino acids into the liver, which the liver will then convert them into sugar. The body supports the mind. The mind is in chaos. The body goes in chaos. And number five, the identity base is set in event, judgment, and reaction. This is so important to understand because every human being on the planet operates and functions in the same manner. 
Every human being is programmed into stage three socialized mind by age 16. And this programming is what sets the belief systems that one carries into their life. This is protected by the comfort zone and acted out or the behavior is driven by the human construct. The human being is hardwired for behavior. Does that all make sense, David, or is that just too much? Now, I think if people could grasp this part, just understand when I've said this a lot, but when it says you're not broken, this is what we mean. It's you're not broke. It's not you were programmed input way before you had a choice. And then now that you feel that kind of why am I like this is because you want to go against what you've been programmed. And I think so many people have that conflicting things because they're still so attached to that, that tribe. And I think that's a, it's, it's a, it's unfortunate for people not to understand this, but the way that you're explaining it is perfect. So when we talk on today is health huddles, right? And I will tell you this, people create that identity as the ego and the identity is driving your behavior and judgment. And one of the things that you get in identity is your diagnosis, mm -hmm. your identity of your anxiety, identity of being depressed, identity of being sick, identity of every, it's all identity. And then you are going to have your behavior driven within the identity. So if you are searching to lose weight or gain optimal health or partake in anti-aging or reverse disease or prevent disease, if you're looking to be and stay healthy, this cannot possibly happen if you do not change your thoughts, which means changing your belief systems, which means you must move into stage four of development, self-authoring mind, and reprogram the subconscious of the cage mind. This is the processes that we teach in Stress Mastery. It's about letting go of programs that trap us in negative states with negative thoughts. And it's about creating new skills that drive behavior toward conflict resolution. This process turns off that alarm system red zone while activating the recuperation system green zone. And this is where the three brains of the human being connects. Head brain, which holds the cage mind and belief systems, connects to the heart brain, which sets your state within the body, how you feel, and the gut brain that creates bursts of positive, good feeling, calming neurochemicals. This is the body-mind, mind-body connection. The body supports the mind. But what happens when we consciously rest the body? First, those listening who are new to personal development, we've talked about a lot today, we do not change our life by focusing on trying to change our mind or thoughts. Yeah. This is a, a might be confusing if you've never heard that before. We change our mind by letting go of programs that activates us in event judgment reaction. And this process is done through the body. We release old programs when they become activated through the heart. The emotions you feel in the body are stemming from the activated program in the head. The purpose of these emotions is to drive your behavior. Now, when you can pause and see that, you are in the process of releasing the program. We also, talking about setting new programs, skills, we set new programs through volition. This is the process of executing a new behavior through consistent action. And this is also done through the body. Now, if we cr create the practice of consciously resting the body, we will calm the mind and shift the human construct into the green zone recuperation system. If you recall, when the recuperation system activates, this connects the three brains and creates bursts of positive neurochemicals. It's this state when we create high energy, 
fat burning, balanced hormone communication, healing, optimal wellness. It's in this state where we have true anti-aging. We can focus. We can enhance our memory. We can also create any type of change. It's this state where we create change, whether it's physical, mental, or your life experience. We must address the aspects that are disrupting your physical body. We must address the aspects that are disrupting your mental states. And we must address the aspects disrupting your life experience. And all of this has one single thing that must be addressed. Your belief systems, your belief system programs. You understand, David? Yeah. For, for me, I thought that was very interesting because some people, I mean, you look at different groups, different family members, different families in general. I have a friend that um, he he's overweight for him in his group of people, his friends, his family, he's the lightest. So for him, he's content with where he's at, man, I'm not, you know, this, I'm not that, but that's still the belief that he's stuck in that he's not being able to change. He's always wondering why he's upset or sad, or he feels anxious or something's going on. And he's just, life is just unfair to me. And I'm trying to tell him it's not, it comes from it. Then it's the way that your body is functioning. His first thing is no. Have you seen the people I'm around? No, no way. But it's what you're saying. It's that belief that he thinks he's healthy because he's healthier than most of the people he's around. The reinforcement he's getting from the people around him is, you look great. But in reality, his blood work and stuff is all off. It's not even his, it doesn't even matter what his blood work is. He doesn't feel well. Yeah. So if you don't feel good, right, and you're in mm-hmm. anxiety and you're anxious and you're, you're, you know, people have to understand the process to end disruption begins with the still point. This is what I mean by rest the body. You can pause and see the voice in your head. That's why we named the ego. And once you see the voice in your head, you can feel the emotion, the energy in your body. This is felt in the heart. You rest the body when you create a still point. And when you do this, if you do it, and slow down just a little, you will notice that you're outside your mind or body. You're observing and consciously feeling what's going on. And ask the question, because Mark Middlestead will love this, (laughs) who's observing and consciously feeling what's going on? Mm -hmm. This is meditation. This is the let go technique. This is when you get into the zone. This is when you get into flow. If we rest the body, consciously rest the body, we calm the mind. This is what happens when you slow down. This is what happens when you take a conscious breath. The body relaxes. The body supports the mind. So the mind calms. But this is also the key that unlocks optimal health people. Each time we consciously rest the body, we activate the human constructs recuperation system. And this is where the body deals with inflammation, recuperation, metabolism, and all aspects of well-being. You consciously rest the body. You understand that, David? Yeah, for sure. Especially not being stuck in that. It's it's, <laughs> it's, it's night And it's just so people understand. So I got some techniques here, techniques to rest the body. Well, the first two techniques are diet and exercise, but this is a given in stress mastery. We need our body to be balanced so we can change the mind. If we don't have our body balanced, you will not change the mind and you will get trapped in emotion. This is what happens. But that's not what we're talking about today. We're not talking about the steps of stress mastery. We're talking about some techniques that you can use throughout the day. So one technique is the slow down technique. And this is simple. You literally set a little alarm on your phone 
I like if you have the Apple Watch or one a smart watch, you can set a little alarm on there and it just buzzes. You don't have to have it going on. It buzzes. And when it buzzes, you just stop and say the mantra three times. Slow down. Pause. Slow down. Pause. Slow down. I did that at the event with the group and it, and they were shocked because you cannot help but switch over to the green zone when you do that. It's such mm -hmm. a simple technique. So imagine if you set that alarm every hour and that one technique, because every time you do that, you're turning on a recuperation system. Number two, learn to transition roles through your tasks. So transitioning roles is just pause plan. You transition your role. So when you're done with one thing, just slow down and take a simple breath. When you're done with one task before you move to the other one, just pause. Move the body. I'm done with this. I'm going to go move my body. Then I'll come back. But learn to transition your roles consciously so you're not just running from one thing to the next thing to the next thing because you never allow the body to rest. If you don't let the body rest, then you stay in the alarm system. Number three, journaling is powerful, people. If you learn to journal and write, even if you're keeping a little journal, a little notebook, Every time you feel an emotion and you feel something, journal it out. Because the moment you do that, you are allowing the body to rest. You actually rest the body. Number four, plan executed breaks. And I mean breaks, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever it works. But plan them and really execute them and take breaks, not to stimulate yourself, take breaks to relax. Whether it be five minutes sitting outside, going for a little walk. I like movement. I like to do this with movement. But when you do that, it rests the body. It's interesting. Taking a walk rests the body. And what we mean by rest the body, it means turning off the alarm system. Number five is a big one. Showers and baths. Sad Guru teaches us. I never knew why I took so many showers. And David will tell you, it's kind of the joke of the family. I take at least three showers a day and sometimes more. But I take showers to close my day, to set my day throughout the day. And the reason, I didn't know why I did it. But Sad Guru talked about, he goes, when you're in a shift, that means we're changing. Our consciousness is shifting. He says, you need to shower often. First of all, the water hitting the body switches the nervous system over. So it turns off the alarm system, turns on the recuperation system, turns the red zone, green zone. But also it calms and it relaxes and it allows you to release any energies that are built up. And the last one is actually is a stress mastery technique. It's the let go technique. You need to carry the let go technique on a card. And you need to understand it and slow it down. I'll be talking about it a lot next week. But that card, for those that are already practicing, is huge. Because the moment you pull the card out, you rest the body. That's it, David. What do you got? The one thing that I have for me that, that helps me kind of, you know, reset and recharge is, is always going outside. I, I think if... If I just step outside for two, three minutes, when I used to, when I used to work in the, the kitchen, that was probably one of the most stressful jobs that I've had. And every kitchen was stressful. Um, they only let people who smoke go outside. So I used to tell my management I smoked so they can let me outside every now and then just so I could take a nice breath, yes. clear my head and go right in. And for me, that literally would recharge me for another eight, seven hours to go worth of a shift. And it's like, it's, it's, it's hard to explain the way that you kind of, the, the weight feels like it's lifted off. You kind of recharge and recenter. You're like, all right, let's do this. Let's get back into it. But just stepping outside just for a few minutes, it doesn't have to be long. And especially if you go out there and walk just for a little bit, oh, that's probably my favorite thing to do. 
powerful. I agree with you. And so each of you have to understand, first of all, you have to have awareness of why you need to rest the body. Of course, sleep is important. We're not talking about sleep today. We're talking about turning off the alarm system, turning on a recuperation system. So you have to have that awareness and then you have to create practices. And when you keep consistent practices, these will become skills, which means they become habits and they automatically happen. I do this all day long, automatically. David is now starting to do these things automatically. They become habits. These are habits that support higher energy of existence. Mm-hmm. Anything else, Dave? No, I think all right, that's, that's it. Cool. That's it for today's show. Our mission here is to create a shift in a planet. And you can join us on this mission by simply like, share, and subscribe. Links are right below the show. As always, until next time, stay inspired.